Today we are going to be talking about the symbiotic relationships between living organisms. So symbiosis refers to the living together of two or more species of an organism. So this is the living together or the association basically. So living together that means that there's an association between one organism with another. So a symbiotic relationship may benefit one or both members or it can be beneficial to harm to one but harmful to the other. So it means we might have ty we might have types of symbiotic relationships where one organism be benefits or where both organisms benefit or it can only be beneficial to one organism but it can be harmful to the other. So let's actually look at the key terminology. So mutualism is a symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit. So mutual is actually meaning two. So a symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit, it means that in the, in the, in the, in the results of the relationship actually benefits the both organisms. So we've got commensalism. So commensalism is a symbiotic relationship to when where one organism benefits without harming or affecting the other organism. So this is a relationship whereby only one organism will benefit. Only one organism will benefit, but there is no harm that is or that, that, that is experienced by the other organism. So this is the basic key terminology that you should know as we move on. So here we have got parasitism. So parasitism is a symbiotic relationship where parasitic organisms benefit while causing harm to their host. So it means that here we're having two organisms, the host and the parasite. So this this relationship uh, benefits the parasite, but then it harms the host. Remember that the host, it can be a human, it can be an animal. So we have got lichens, which are composite organisms made up of fungi that grow symbiotically with algae and cyanobacteria. So this means that there is a relationship between the algae and cyanobacteria. So we've got the ruminant and even toad mammal that chews the cud regurgitated from its rumen, e.g. cattle, sheep, antelopes, deer, giraffes and their, and their relatives. And then lastly, we've got mycorrhiza, which, which is the symbiotic association of fungi with the roots of trees. But then we're actually going to see these definitions as soon as we go. So we've got the three types of symbiosis. So these three types of symbiosis will occur between living organisms. It can be mutualism, it can be commensalism, it can be parasitism. So mutualism, both organisms benefit H.G. lichens, as we mentioned in the keywords. So commensalism, one species benefits, but then the others does not benefit. But then there is no harm towards the other. So it does not benefit, nor is it harmed. So I've got parasitism, where one species benefits, one Whilst the other is harmed. So these are the three types of symbiosis which we have between living organisms. So we have got lichens first. So algae need a moist environment to survive and couldn't live on dry end. So this is telling us that the algae, which is a protist, we will need what a moist environment, which is which is meaning that the environment is wet. So by moist it means it's wet. So it needs that moist environment to be able to survive and cannot live on dry land. So they can, however, form a mutualistic relationship. So once they say mutualistic relationship, it means that there's an association which will benefit the two organisms, the algae and the other organisms. So mutualistic relationship with the fungus. So this means that this relationship is benefiting both the algae and the fungus. And this is called a lichen. And this is called a lichen. So this whole relationship, which is a mutualistic relationship between a fungus and an algae, is called a lichen. So the fungus provides the algae, uh, the, the algae protection from the environment. So remember that it cannot live on dry land. Therefore, the fungus is able to actually protect the algae from that environment which is dry. So fungi, however, cannot produce food for themselves. They in turn obtain nutrients from the algae, which can produce food by photosynthesis. So in this case, algae is actually getting protected from the environment, while fungi, since it, it, since it is actually heterotrophic, meaning that it cannot produce its own food, it has to rely on the food that is produced by what? By the algae. So they in turn obtain nutrients from the algae which can produce food by photosynthesis. So the algae can produce food by photosynthesis, meaning that it has got chloroplast. In this way, both the algae and the fungus benefit. All of them benefited. The algae got protection, the fungus got food. Therefore, this is called a mutualistic relationship between, between this fungus and algae 
algae since both, both of the organisms benefited. So we've got the relationship between nitrogen fixing bacteria and plants. So remember that the higher plants require nitrogen to manufacture progens. We have discussed that in our previous video. So higher plants will require that nitrogen to manufacture proteins, but then the plants cannot use the nitrogen directly from the atmosphere because it is not absorbable to plants. So plants require nitrogen in the form of nitrates. So some soil bacteria can actually convert that free nitrogen to nitrates that can be used by plants. So this is actually a relationship between the nitrogen fixing bacteria. Remember that the nitrogen fixing bacteria is responsible for the conversion or is responsible for turning nitrogen to a nitrate which will be used by plants to manufacture proteins. So, so some nitrogen by, by fixing bacteria live in special nodules in the roots of leguminous plants. So a leguminous plant is just a pod producing plant such as beans and peas. So they produce nitrates for the plant while the plant provides the bacterium with a place to live. Remember that this bacteria needs a certain condition so that it can live in. Therefore, since, the, 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 since, since, this, the, the, since there is a this is there's a relationship between the nitrogen fixing bacteria and the plants therefore they produce nitrates for the plant while the plant provides bacteria with a place to live so it means that this the, 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 this bacteria the, this bacteria is actually helping the plants with the nitrates which is needed for manufacture of proteins while the plant provides a, a place to live the carbohydrates and water remember that green plants actually photosynthesize meaning that they can actually provide carbohydrates and water so both the plant and bacteria benefit from this relationship this is known as a mutualistic relationship so let's go to the relationship between the E. coli and the human intestine so the E. coli is actually the Escherichia coli which is a bacteria which is found in the human intestine so not all bacteria found in our intestines are harmful so it means some of them they can actually help us so mutualistic bacteria such as Escherichia coli E. coli are Live on the undigested remains of food in the gut and then make vitamin K, which can be used by humans. So, mutualistic bacteria that, that, that E. coli they live on the undigested remains of food, the undigested ones in the gut of a human being. So, they make vitamin K, which can be used by, by, by humans. So, this vitamin K plays an important role in the blood clotting. Both humans and bacteria benefit from this relationship because bacteria actually leaves, can be actually find a place to live on the undigested remains of food while the human benefits from the vitamin K which plays an important role in blood clotting. So this is called a mutualistic um, it is called a mutualistic relationship again. So mutualistic bacteria are also found in the digestive tracts of ruminants and termites where they are responsible for the digestion of cellulose into simple sugar. So it means this mutualistic bacteria it can it can be found in the digestive tracts or in the in actually the part for digestion for ruminants and termites which can actually be uh, we, we, in which they are responsible for the digestion of cellulose into simple sugars. So let's look at mycorrhizal fungi and the roots of higher plant. So here there's a relationship again between mycorrhizal fungi and the roots of higher plants. So filamentous fungi known as mycorrhizas can penetrate and become associated with the roots of higher plants. The fungi increase the absorption surface of the roots. The fungus in turn gets sugars from the plants. So this is also another mutualistic so this is also another mutualistic relationship between the mycorrhizal fungi and the roots of those higher plants. So the higher plants are just referring to these plants that we can see. So these filamentous fungi known as mycorrhizas can actually penetrate and become associated to the roots. So it means that we can actually find this fungi in the roots of those higher plants. So the fungi increase the absorption surface area for the roots. So it means that there is a, a larger space so that the roots can actually absorb water while the fungus in turn gets sugars from the plant. Remember that the plants actually produce sugars since they are photosynthetic. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends to stay tuned.